Hi friends, I hope you're all doing well today. For those who don't know me, my name is Luna and I make Animal Crossing videos, mostly just me decorating and terraforming my island. So if you're into that, subscribe and be a part of our little AC family. Today I will be decorating the beautiful, sweet, and absolute queen, Maple. I love Maple so much, but we all know my favorite villager is Marshall. Maple is also my birthday twin. I was so, so happy when I found out. I'm curious though. Let me know what your birthday twin is in the comments. Do you love them? Do you like them? Do you hate them? Or were you just like, wow, Nintendo, you really played me on this one. <laughs> For this build, I wanted to create like an area based off of her personality and her house exterior while also incorporating some fairy core elements. Here I'm trying to create like a concave shape. Oh no. <laughs> I feel like I'm back in physics class learning about lenses, um, but yeah, basically I'm just creating an inward shape. I like doing these types of terraforming because it looks interesting and kind of complicated, but it's actually really easy to do. Also, ignore all those flowers you see on the beach. I have way too many flowers and they just kept breeding on their own. So I just decided to put them on the beach to stop them from growing. So that's a little pro tip if you didn't know. Up here, I've decided to decorate based off of her personality when you first get maple her catchphrase is honey so i turned this area into a small little apiary using some bee and wasp models i used the fairy path as a form of grass because it has flowers already on it and mushrooms so when i put the models on top of it it looks like they're hovering over it so i thought that was cute To incorporate the fairy core theme, I added this star clock and nova light to bring some light to this area. And then I added some pink flowers to kind of hide the unfinished path. I added the bush to add more greenery and then the mom's plushie because it's pink and adorable, just like maple. I added the fairy circle design so that I can add this purple hyacinth lamp, but I couldn't get to that spot so I had to create a cliff and then add the lamp and then destroy it. All because Nintendo has all these limitations. I added the garden wagon to the empty spot. I love this color because it matches so well with this area. For the front of Mabel's yard, I wanted to give her an area where she can relax. I added the tiny roses design under the book to give an illusion of the gnome reading on top of some roses. Plus, Maple loves to read, so adding the book, in my opinion, was fitting for her yard. And of course, I added this little lacy rug and a tiny library for Maple so that she can grab some books to read. I love this mum cushion because it looks like a big flower, it's beautiful, and it's a seat, which is so convenient. For the inner part of this concaved shape, I wanted to give Maple a spot to read. So I added this mush lamp to give her a light source if she decided to read here, and of course, a rocking chair for her to sit. This next part, I was trying to decide where I wanted to put her house. I didn't want to block the bridge that leads to the crescent moon in the back. So I decided to create a path that can lead you there. So here I'm just marking off her house, which is four by four. Doing this will let me visually see her house and if I need to make any changes around it before I permanently move her to this area. On this side of Maple's house, I wanted to create another path, but this path, I wanted it to look more of like a fairy forest. I added this small mushroom platform with this large star fragment instead of the usual star clock. And then I added this Nova light, of course, because it is a fairy core island and I love the Nova lights. I dug up some holes because I was trying to decide where I wanted to put the tree, but I ended up adding the bush here instead. And then I'll later add the cedar tree in the back. 
So for the empty spots here, I added some more custom designs to connect the fairy path together. As much as I love the fairy path and you guys know how much I love the fairy path, I didn't want to overdo it in this area. So adding this stone circle really helped connect the fairy path together. Adding the brick well here made her area look very cottagey and the color went so well with her house. I also added these log stakes because I don't want any of my babies to fall into the well. <laughs> I know I said I'll add the cedar tree, but I ended up adding the hardwood tree because one, I wanted to add different heights to this area, and two, when it's cherry blossom season, all of the hardwood trees turn pink, so why not? I realized that you couldn't see the small mushroom in the back, so I ended up moving it to the other side. here I added a fairy circle with this mush lamp of course so now I'm going to lay the fairy path down as you can see the template I made earlier really helps me know where I need to place the path two tips I have learned throughout the many months of me placing this path down and playing around with it tip number one is you want to keep the path in an s shape and two you don't want to repeat the same piece of the path more than twice so doing these two things really helps make the path look natural but by all means lay the path down however you want remember that this is your island and you can style it however you want i just found out these two tips and it really helps me play around with the path more i wanted to share those two tips for for those that are struggling to make their path look somewhat natural so i hope those tips help then here i ended up kicking off one of the designs i instantly came up with the idea of breaking up the path and have it go to two different directions where one leads to the crescent moon pond in the back and the other leads to the other side of the island also, if you're interested, I did make a video on how to create a crescent moon shaped pond. I will leave a time card on top that will take you straight to that video. So now I'm going to finish off this build by filling up the empty spaces with some more custom designs. I added this wedding arch because I thought it looked so nice and elegant as you walk through it to get to the pond. And then, as you know, I had so many flowers, I ended up putting some behind Maple's house to kind of hide it, so yeah. And then I'll be placing Maple's house. And because I'm a perfectionist, I had to move the log stakes up. <laughs> For all of my villagers, I like to add a mush stool and then their photo so that when people visit, they can see exactly whose house it is by the photo. And then I'm going to finish off the build with some more custom designs to fill up the empty spaces. Here is how Maple's yard ended up looking. I really love how it turned out. I love the fairy cottage vibes. If you enjoyed the video, let me know by hitting the like button. And if you want to see more videos from me, make sure to subscribe. I love you all always. Take care and I'll see you in my next video.